Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale. Today, I'll be smoking the West Tampa White Series Toro. And this is a really pretty 6x52 Toro cigar that features Ecuadorian Habano on the wrapper, Ometepe from Nicaragua on the binder, and fillers also from Nicaragua in Condega and Esteli. It's available in a Robusto, this Toro right here, and a Gigantes. And the Toro version retails for right under $10 at $9.99 MSRP. It is sold in boxes of 20 at $1.99. It was founded very recently by a former retiree that I guess wasn't retired for very long, <laughs> but Rick Rodriguez founded this brand after leaving CAO and General Cigars for so many years, was the CEO at the times of the release of the Amazon Basin series, which we all know and love. We had a great time reviewing that cigar. The Pilon, which I also have a stick of that we have to review. The Bones, which I do not have a stick of, but I believe that it's uh, DJ over at Pick Jimmy Cigar Reviews said that the Bones was pretty interesting for what it was, as well as several others. So comes from a very good lineage of cigar making and West Tampa is his first brand out on his own. I was very excited to get an interview with Rick. We had one scheduled for PCA last year. I went over to the booth and West Tampa was, they had a gorgeous booth, by the way. For their first year, I believe it was, going to PCA and for pretty much the first full year of the brand being released, they had an absolutely gorgeous booth. And it makes total sense because upon going to TPE this year and not being able to get the interview that I had scheduled with Rick Dunn at PCA, I was looking for him, I was looking for the booth, and I was informed by some close people in his inner circle that Rick just decided last minute that they were gonna put everything into PCA this year. So they decided not to go to TPE, but instead to go all out at PCA. So I'm looking forward in July to talking with you, Rick, and getting you on the channel for a couple of minutes, brother, if you'll uh, if you'll have me. Off of the cold draw, I definitely pick up Ometepe on it. The flavors, the rich, dark earth, minerality, and chocolate are all coming through on the cold draw on the cigar. We all know that that doesn't really mean much until we smoke it, so we're gonna dive into it right now. And I believe that Cigar Hound Dog, even though he is not the biggest fan of Ometempe, I believe that he did a review on this cigar. I have not gone back to rewatch it because I want it to be very unbiased when, while smoking the cigar. Initial flavors off of the lighting are a little bit of black pepper, not very intimidating, not very spicy at all, very bready. A lot of yeasty fun flavors of bread, toast, all of those wonderful cedar expressions all coming through off of the initial lighting. Really nice. Ecuadorian Habano, we, we would come to expect a lot of nice bready notes coming off of that to start. We're still left with a little bit of those oaky cedar toasted bread notes, but there's been the inclusion of some really nice dark espresso coffee, as well as a ton, an absolute ton of creamy notes that have come out in the form of nutty components like almond and peanut. Spice has picked up tremendously as well. If we were at a five, and five by 10 or five out of 10 at the beginning of the smoke, we're definitely somewhere in the realm of a seven or almost eight out of 10 to the point where it's slightly staying on the nostrils, but not unpleasant at all. So there's an inclusion of white pepper along with the black pepper now to round out the spice. Not really a ton of like red chili flake or anything like that. Just a little extra like dial up in the white pepper. It's actually funny how much cream has developed in this cigar. It's uh, very interesting that, you know, the Ecuadorian Habano, it has this this bold flavor to compete with the Ometepe. I don't know if it, there's any special treating process to the Ometepe that's in this, but the Ometepe is very reserved. It adds a nice little backbone to it, along with the Lajero or any type of fillers from Condega and Esteli. But man, just so, so well balanced, so well blended, and to be expected, right, from Rick Rodriguez. It's just fantastic to see in a Toro under $10 MSRP that you get this much flavor off of a stick, you get this much body off of a stick, and it's thoroughly entertaining almost all the way through. What I would pair with the cigar. And I really like the idea of grabbing a bottle of Henry McKenna if possible. This is the 10 year bottle in Bond. It was initially released at $35 a bottle, but since receiving whiskey, best whiskey of the world, honor, San Francisco World Spirits, all of these highly touted organizations that judge and critique whiskeys from around the world, 
and just spirits from around the world, it has since increased in price and become very highly sought after and allocated. It is a heavily weeded whiskey, just like Pappy Van Winkle, and does come with those beautiful soft undertones, the notes of caramel, woody, baking spice. An absolutely complimentary finish with the peanut and specifically some dark sugar rich molasses notes to this particular whiskey. It is very soft, very elegant in a 10 year bottle in Bond Bourbon. And that's why I wanted to pair it with the West Tampa White. Just looking at the blend, the differences between the white and the black, I feel as though with the black, I'm going to, when I smoke it and review it on the channel, I'm probably going to be a little bit more rye focused as far as whiskey pairings go. And I think that rye whiskey is gonna be the key to unlock some of those flavors hidden inside the blend on the West Tampa Black. Attic I haven't looked at, so I'm not sure. Same thing with the red. But I think that with the white, the heavily weeded bourbons of the world, that's the wheelhouse for this cigar. I also think that you could probably do well with the Boulevardier cocktails, the introduction of maybe some, some Aperol or some Campari with a little bit of sweet vermouth just to add some complexity and some nice bark and woody notes into the mix as far as what you're tasting and what you're comparing as far as a complimentary pairing. But there's no doubt that this is a great cigar to enjoy with coffee, with several non-alc options like your Diet Dr. Peppers of the world. I mean, it's just overall a fantastic cigar. I think this is an absolute five pack worthy cigar. I think that you should try out both the white and the black and decide for yourself which one, now the red <laughs> and the attic. But uh, what I'm going, what my plan is and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna decide which one is the one for me. I think this is a great introduction to the brand and I'm so happy that I gave this a shot and thank you very much to West Tampa for providing me this sample. So thank you all so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, continuing to grow the community here at Master Your Ash. I look forward to catching you again for another West Tampa Cigar and Henry McKenna Bourbon review.